Hi and welcome to this lesson on the linear function. Now the linear function looks like this. fx is equal to ax plus b. Okay, now a and b are called parameter values where the parameter a determines the direction of the graph and parameter, parameter b determines the position. Now every graph that we draw will have direction and position but it will also have shape. So the third thing is shape. Now the shape is completely determined by what is happening to the x value. So in this case we see that nothing is really happening to x except that it is being multiplied with a. So my input isn't being squared and it's not, being, uh, it's not dividing something else. Uh, but let's leave it there. This general form determines the shape. So let's look at a few examples. Here are three lovely examples. Okay, in the first example, you will notice that I have the form and we can almost immediately see the form there. Where my a is equal to 2 and my b value in this case is equal to negative 1. Now remember what I said, that the 2 determines the direction of the graph and the negative 1, the b value, determines the position. And we'll look at that in just a moment, what does it mean? But what I'll tell you for now is that this one has a positive direction or upwards. In this one we see that my a is equal to negative 3. This one's direction is negative and it's also um, larger than the 2. So it is a steeper but a downhill direction. We'll look at it. You, it will make sense in a moment. And my b value, oh I have no b value. Doesn't mean there is no b value, it just means b is equal to 0. And then in this one, this one looks a little bit strange. It doesn't seem like it has an a and a b value. It is because it's not yet written in the form ax plus b. So let's write it like that. So what we're going to do is distribute the 9 so it's 9 divided by 9 minus 6 divided by 9 x and then I notice that this if I simplify it a little bit further is 1 minus 6 over 9 is the same as 2 over 3 x there we go and maybe it's still not in the form ax so let's just swap those two terms around 2 negative 2 over 3x plus positive 1 okay which means that my a value in this case is equal to negative 2 over 3 and my b value is equal to positive 1 so let's go and look at what those three functions would look like on a graph. Now to draw a linear function I need two points. And finding these two points is quite easy because a straight line I just need two points. For example if I have a point here, a point there, then I just make a straight line through those two points. So two points is enough for me to draw a linear function. The first point is very easy to find. It is the y-intercept. Now, why the y-intercept is very easy to find is because that is where x is equal to 0. If you think of the y-axis, or the Cartesian plane, x is 1 anywhere on this point x would be 1. At the origin x is 0 but it's also 0 everywhere on the y-axis. So if a line cuts the y-axis I know that that point where it cuts the, the x-coordinate will always be 0 and then depends on what the y-coordinate is. So to find the y-intercept of a graph I just make x equal to 0. 
To find another point, we have three different ways depending on which one might be easiest in the situation. So for another point, I may use, if I want to, the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, the same thing applies. The y-value, so we'll make y equal to 0. Another way we can do it is we just substitute any x equal to something but not x equal to 0 because we've already substituted x equal to 0 for our first point so we can just choose any other point substitute it in for x and find a value for y then we'll have another coordinate or finally we can use the gradient now the gradient is the value a the one in front of the x this gradient can be expressed as a numerator over a denominator the denominator tells me how many steps forward and the numerator tells me how many steps up or down and it will be up if it's positive and it will be down if it's negative now I'll look at that in just a minute so let's go and look at the example so let's go look at our first function we need two points the first point is very easy to find I just make x equal to 0 but when x is equal to 0, 2 times 0, that portion will cancel away completely. So the b value will always be the y-intercept. So negative 1 is the y-intercept. So we have one point already. Let's find the other point by finding the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we must make y equal to 0. So here we must make y or we can say fx, fx is now equal to 0, 0 is 2x minus 1 and now we can just solve it. So we say okay then 2x is equal to positive 1 so x is equal to a half. That means the x coordinate is a half for the y coordinate 0. And that is the point there, halfway between there. And all I need to do now is connect a line through those two points. There we go with a straight line through those two points. And we usually put arrows at the end indicating that this line still goes on to infinity. Let's look at the second one. In the second one, we notice that our b value is 0. What that means is that where do I cut my y axis? At 0. You'll notice it's also where I cut my x axis. And now the problem is that I can't find another point on the x axis. The x intercept and the y intercept is the same point. So let's find another point by using some other value for x. So let's say, let's look at what happens if f is equal, sorry, if x is equal to 2. You can choose any value other than 0. I'm going to use 2. And if I use 2, I see that negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6. In other words, another point on this line is, n is the value 2 for x and negative 6 for y. So we go 2 for x. That means it's somewhere here. And the y value is negative 6. Somewhere there. So where those two lines meet, there is another point. 
and with that in mind I connect these two put arrow on the sorry put arrows on the end and that is the line and we should actually and I often forget this we should actually put the name of the function fx is equal to negative 3x write it on there next to it um, most of the times we won't if we draw on one graph we will one be will be fx another one will be gx okay there I quickly fixed it and wrote the first lines equation on the graph as well okay let's look at this last one we've already for that last one found the a value which is the gradient and we found the b value which is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is positive 1. So that's where my graph will cut the y-axis. The a value is now negative 2 over 3. Remember what I said that that determines the gradient, the steepness of the graph. And this one tells me that for every three steps I must go forward, I must go two steps down. And the reason why it's down and not up is because of the negative. So starting at this point, to find another point, I'm going to go three steps forward. So th I'm going to jump one, two, three jumps forward, and then two jumps down. One, two, down. And there would be another point. Then there I have my third graph with arrows at the end showing it goes on GX there we go I hope you find this entertaining and you got it you understood it so good luck in trying it on your own now